Good morning, everyone. Let me start with extending a warm welcome to everyone here, and especially to Ria and Shelley for taking your time to visit us in our college. We are Team Opo, presenting to you EcoQuest Education Foundation. Me, Susan, Sammy, Charlotte, and Katrina, we are the Team Opo. We visited uh, EcoQuest field site to an gain a more understanding about how things are working there and we made a small presentation for you to watch so that you also can understand what EcoQuest is about and what is the problem they are facing and how we are going to tackle them. So let's go to the presentation. EcoQuest Education Foundation is a registered charitable trust established in New Zealand in 1999. It is an educational organisation that focuses on delivering programs based around sustainability and climate preservation. Students from across America come to New Zealand to spend time studying here, and the majority of their time is spent at the EcoQuest field site in beautiful Whakatiwai. To the EcoQuest team, sustainability can be achieved only when the natural environment, people and their culture, their social, political, as well as economic realities and needs are taken into consideration. The EcoQuest field site is approximately an hour and ten minutes drive southeast from Auckland CBD and is situated on the eastern edge of the Hunua Ranges. The field site boasts an office and workshop, along with dry labs, study rooms, staff accommodation, student cabins, and a farakai that is used as both a dining room and a classroom. A large ablutions block services all the students' hygiene needs, along with underground septic tanks and above-ground water tanks. There is also a large garden, a climbing wall, and a slack line to keep students busy. In discussions with Team EcoQuest, our own Team Mopok began to set just how precious the EcoQuest field site is, how it is central to the whole EcoQuest philosophy, and how deep the hurt must have been when the site was hit by a 1 in 100 year storm event in January of 2018. Since EcoQuest is situated right between a river and the coast, the damage done by this event was significant. Flood waters came almost completely through the property and power was cut off. The flood affected almost everyone in town, but in true Kiwi style, the community came together to help each other out. Since then, EcoQuest have worked hard to repair the damage that was done and worked to make the field site a place that is both functional and welcoming to all. So, um, thank you guys for watching our videos. This is just an introduction for our presentation. And now, when actually we first met EcoQuest team during our blog session course and uh, blog course session, so they came to us with the problem that how can we build climate resilience in a rural coastal community. Um, this is this kind of uh, problem actually needs a deep understanding. So for that, actually, we um, applied the design thinking process, and the first step was in Pathai. So we interviewed the equipment team, and we organized a site visit because uh, in design thinking we call this problem is a wicked problem. So after our discussion with EcoQuest team, we found uh, we came out with the three wishes. You can see the first wish is came site resilient to impacts of climate change. The second wish to uh, improve student experience, and the wish three is be an exemplar of coastal living and be self-sufficient. 
So uh, after these three wishes, actually we started our brainstorming and we came out this four areas that we need to work out this uh, we found that 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 four area actually the major categories and that is water energy shelter and food and uh, um, to improve actually improving these four categories could be a potential solution for our problems we are looking for and the one thing we kept in our mind that ecoquest doesn't have a large budget to spend it so we tried the economical solution as much as possible so we will talk more about that and now I'm welcoming Charlotte to talk about that. Thank you, Sami, more than everyone. So during our interview and site visit with EcoQuest, we took note that EcoQuest's main concerns were the ablution blocks, so the washing and toilet facilities. They're currently situated <coughs> in the area on, so on site, sorry, that's the most uh, prone to float, they can't be moved and they, they can't be secured either. So we thought that we could reduce the demand on the main sewer um, by finding new ways to treat the black water and the grey water. So one way to reduce the black water, which is basically the toilet water, is the use of composting toilets. They have many advantages and they fit really well with EcoQuest's um, philosophy and needs. They are sustainable, there's no water waste or waste of human waste even. They're easily relocatable and they're affordable as well. So on the paper, they're the perfect solution for the site. Our only issue was that the students are reluctant to use them. So um, EcoQuest actually thought about the composting toilet solution before um, and they, when they polled their students, only 20% of them said that they would be interested in using composting toilets on site. Um, because one of the main focuses in this project was the student experience, we couldn't just ignore the students' concern. But we thought, oh, that's a shame because the composting toilets really is a great solution for the site. So rather than just giving up on the idea, we thought that we could make the composting toilets more desirable to students. So one solution would be to educate the students on composting toilets by implementing signage on site um, and encourage the students to give it a shot. Another solution is simply to transform the experience of the students with composting toilets. Uh, when EcoQuiz students had been polled, they had just come back from um, their camp experience. So what they had in mind was probably this, the drop-down toilets, which is smelly, dirty, cold and uncomfortable. Um, but actually, the composting toilets is a totally different experience. Uh, they're just as comfortable as the regular toilets, so in fact students could end up wanting to use them more than the toilets currently on site. That's what we're hoping anyway. As for the grey water, we thought that reed beds could actually be a great solution. We could connect them to the kitchen and the shower facilities. Um, so how do they work? Basically, the natural filtration system where the plant's roots are going to purify the water. So they're environmental because uh, they reuse the used water. They're also economical because um, the beads can be made out of recycled materials such as um, an old bathtub, for example. I've seen, this, I've seen this before. And if we think about the students, they could actually be uh, a great learning for them um, because learning how to create and maintain a read bit sort of fits really well in their studies as well. Now I'm going to hand it over to Susan for energy solutions. Hi. When we were looking um, to uh, find solutions for a sustainable field center, we found that we can use the renewable energy in the environment to pro produce electricity, which can actually cut down on the cost and other alternative solutions for lighting and uh, cooking, etc. So the first solution we were looking at is using of the solar energy. When we looked at the solar panels, we found that it's quite expensive for the installation 
and uh, because of the climate of New Zealand, maybe getting uh, sunlight throughout the year to power the big generators for the whole field center might not be a feasible option. So we thought about much cheaper options which we can use are the solar tubes, wherein like the natural sunlight will be coming into the uh, rooms without spending too much money. Also, another um, widely used solution is the transparent roofings. So if we can like make some transparent roofings, uh, most of the time we don't have to use the lights. Another solution is smart lighting, where we can use uh, smart lights were a little bit expensive when we have to buy the lights, but it reduces the electricity cost by 80%, so in the long run, it is actually cheaper. And also, it, we can create the ambience and the interior design to suit the needs of the each room with the smart lighting, so that's actually advantageous. So the next solution was for the wind energy. I think because of the EcoQuest location, this will be the most suitable energy solution because the wind is readily available all throughout the year. And um, the small wind turbines which can be used for residential uses are already available on the market. So if we can like just focus on only the installation costs which comes with the wind turbines, we can generate the electricity what is needed for the field center throughout the year. Another energy usage we were looking at is biogas because it's in some of the studies it is found that tons of food waste are going into uh, landfills in New Zealand. So if that all food waste can be like utilized to make another energy then that can reduce the cost of electricity. So all the organic waste from the kitchen, garden, everything can go into the uh, biogas, which can actually contribute to much of the cooking needs because uh, EcoQuest actually is providing the food for the students as well. So that is another effective way of using and uh, environmental friendly as well as a sustainable solution. And the Byproduct, which is the slurry, which is coming from the uh, biogas, can actually be used as a manure for gardening and other plants. Also, um, before we were talking about the composting toilets, actually the composting toilets can also be connected to this biogas so that the human waste is also utilized and changed back into the cooking energy. Okay, so I'll give uh, to Katrina for talking about the shelter. Thank you, Susan. <clears throat> All right, so shelter was our third of the fourth um, area that we were looking into. And obviously the first thing we wanted to do was safeguard the existing structures. So the most uh, effective way of doing that was to use elevation. Um, essentially just lifting things up where possible. So the advantages of using elevation is that it's cost effective. It's fairly simple, it's a straightforward process. And what it will do is, of course, allow floodwaters or any other water to flow uh, beneath the buildings rather than into the buildings. So how is this actually done? You can see the very far left picture. It's, be, it's done by craning up or jacking up the existing structures and allowing foundation pillars to be built underneath. Um, there is a little bit of pre-work requir required. There's some geotechnical investigation needed um, to test soil quality and things like that, and some calculations needed to do the actual lifting as well. Um, obviously, the, ideally, we want to build above the previous flood water levels with a little bit of a buffer, if possible. And if we are doing this as well, we want to cluster buildings on the higher side of the property, which is near the road, so that it um, reduces that risk of flooding as well. The other area we wanted to look at was uh, in terms of the student experience. So this is the outdoor area improvements. So what we're looking for here are, again, cost-effective options and increased shelter and functionality within the site. So we have both permanent options and movable or transportable options. So for the permanent options, one of the existing ones that EcoQuest was looking at was to install a farley, like up on the left here, 
Um, that would be a really great solution because generally the sides are open, so if there is any floodwaters that do come, it should fl uh, fl flow through the phylac um, a lot easier than um, perhaps other structures. What we also thought might be a good fixed option is to introduce a pergola um, with some natural shade with climbing flowers or plants uh, with something like a bougainvillea that will um, allow for more shade and shelter too. For the movable transportable options, one option is uh, to use picnic tables. Then students can move them where they think, you know, there's more sun or shade as they like, group them together to study, or if they want to be alone, they can use it. Um, and also some triangle shades as well that could go on the existing posts that are there for the hammocks um, and provide some more shelter and protection from the elements as well. Cool. So I'll pass to Sammy now for food. Thank you so much, Katrina. Now, food. This is the fourth option of our idea generation. And food is necessary thing. We all know that. And when we have to talk about food, we have to bring the garden. Because we, uh, when we visited EcoQuest uh, Field Center, we already have seen there is some, there are some gardens about the veggies and flowers. We just recreate or de -re -re redecorate the um, garden area to be more uh, sustainable and more self-sufficient. So here is some options, you can see this is vertical and hanging garden as you have seen before. Um, Katrina was talking about some uh, shelter areas. So the vertical and hanging garden can be go anywhere with any uh, walls or anything. It can be freestanding, it can be attached with any walls. And you can see the photos we have used that is actually very, very inexpensive. It, we, in, the students can make that things and students can make this. Uh, things with the recycled materials like the soda bottle, like the shoe organizer and the bottles. So it's very inexpensive and with this idea, EcoQuest team actually can grow their veggies or some herbs or some uh, green leaves throughout the year because the problem is uh, during the rainy season or the flooding time. So it's it can be a sustainable and self-sufficient solution for the whole year. And then the middle one is movable raised garden beds. Uh, that can be a very, very good option because uh, during the flood time, uh, the EcoQuest team can move this garden bed anywhere they want to. And this is the inexpensive and very sustainable options. And uh, this is the honey cultivation. We all know if bees die, then we will die. Bees are the one of the most important uh, uh, insects uh, uh, to the pollination and we have, because we are planning the garden for the food and the, um, and the uh, flowers, so bees can pollinate the things, so the EcoQuest team or the students, because this is very in in inexpensive and the students also can make that and have a great experience of that and they have a knowledge of uh, importance of bees or in, uh, insects on the climate, so they can make these things, may produce the honey for the year and um, give them opportunity to pollinate the flowers. And this is the permaculture because what actually we were talking about, all of all four of us, this is actually a permaculture. It's a sustainable and eco-friendly system and uh, if uh, they, the students, they know about the permaculture, they actually have a very good knowledge for the lifetime period. They, they can use this experience for their life and they can make a better art maybe. So after that, uh, our prototype and test part and I'm welcoming Charlotte again to talk about that. So this is the prototype that you've got a copy of. Um, the idea was basically to implement as many solutions as possible at the top of the site because that's the least at risk area, that's the elevated area on the site. So um, we also wanted to put everything on the lift side of the site because when we did some journey mapping we noticed that that's the area that's the most used by students as well. So we moved the cabins that were at risk further up on the site um, and we created a valley as well to open up the dining area. Um, each cabin would have their own vertical garden that the students living in the cabin could use. There are also a few, um, there are also a few elevated gardens over there next to the kitchen for cooking purposes. 
Um, the biogas station is sort of like in the middle of the site, next to the kitchen area. Uh, we've got composting toilets at each corner of the site for conveniency and privacy. Um, and most of them have easy access to the biogas station that they would feed and access to a PowerPoint as well, comes because some composting toilets um, require a PowerPoint. Uh, we've got reed beds close to the buildings with um, sinks, showers, or washing machines. We've got turbines at the top of each of the main buildings, and we put our beehives um, sort of like a little bit further away um, to, than where the action is because of risk of bee allergies, that sort of stuff. We didn't want that to happen. Thank you, Charlotte. So just to wrap up quickly, we're hoping that you can see from our proposed uh, prototype that we've really endeavoured to meet the three wishes that we set up to at the beginning. So that's the resiliency um, against climate change, the uh, student experience of the whole site overall, and the third to be an exemplar of self-sufficiency uh, in the coastal community. Um, so we really just want to take the opportunity to thank EcoQuest and um, all of our lovely Ria, Jono, Steve and Shelley for making themselves available in their time, and of course to Peter, uh, for your support and time throughout this also. Um, so now I think we're good to open for any questions. Thank you. Right, thank you, fantastic, fantastic uh, presentation there. We'd like to start with questions. Clients first. Yeah, go. Hi, um, thank you, that was amazing feedback on our site. Um, just one thing I was a little bit curious about is with the composting toilets, what happens in a flood event? Um, how do, and how does that differ from black water getting flooded? Yeah, um, <laughs> someone be a runner, please. <laughs> Thank you. So when we visited the site, we've been told by Ria and Shono that you guys have access to some sort of um, truck that could remove the transportable buildings quite quickly. Um, so we thought that it wouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, so there are two types of composting toilets. You've got the split composting toilets, which have um, the top area and the tank as well. So the waste is going straight into the tank. And you've got the self-contained ones, where the waste is basically going to go in the composting toilets directly, uh, which require more maintenance. Uh, the tanks are actually movable, they can be underground, which we don't really want to do for the EcoQuest side, but they can also be on top of the ground if the toilet cabin is a bit elevated as well. So they would actually be quite easy to move. We're hoping with the biogas station as well that they would most of the time be sort of empty because we can use the human waste for the biogas. So that's the idea as well, to keep them light and if we need to use the truck to remove them in case of flow. Um, yeah, so I was so I also was interested in the composting toilets. I don't know if you've gone this far yet because of your investigation, but did you consider capacity of them versus the septic tanks and things? I, I don't know if you've got that far. Yeah, yeah, I had a quick look. So basically, um, there are, again, two types of composting toilets. You've got the home composting toilets and the, um, um, the industrial composting toilets. Um, so for EcoQuest, we have a recommendation in our uh, report, actually, and we thought that the industrial composting toilets would be a better fit for you guys because they can hold... So I've got some facts somewhere. Um, so composting toilets, industrial composting toilets can hold up, up until, it's the capacity of five people using the composting toilets full time and if it's part time it's up to ten people. So again, thanks to the biogas, we're hoping to keep it light, so we think that it could handle ten students using it full time in terms of capacity. Um, there are usually around 40 students on site, if I remember well. So we thought that five composting toilets would be enough for the old site, for the students and the staff. Um, what, 
you proposed a lot of lot of options. Absolutely fabulous. W uh, given the um, uh, issue of financial feasibility, what what would be the say the top three um, proposals that you would recommend to be implemented that, that you feel could be implemented right right now? I think you can tell from the amount of questions about composting toilets, I think they're probably a top, top on the agenda. <laughs> However, we are aware that there's quite an expense to go with that, so it just depends on EcoQuest um, where they want to invest their budget. There are some really quick fixes that could happen, things like the pergola, the honey, maybe some of the smart lighting are all solutions that they can implement now with fairly low cost. But I think um, the evolutions block in particular was a real problem with the floods, and that's um, when that overflows, that means they can't use the site until that's cleaned up, essentially. Um, so I think that's probably the main solution that would be top on the agenda. Thank you. Yes. Good answer. Yeah. And again, to go back to your question, Shelley, uh, we, our idea is to put all the composting toilets at the top of the site as well, which is less likely to flood it. So we're hoping that you guys won't have to do anything uh, for the next flood even if it happens again. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Kia ora koutou. Thank you very much for a really cool presentation. I really appreciate the way that you, uh, your sensitivities around all the different aspects of this really big project uh, and uh, really enjoyed what you put out there for us. Um, I'm also really um, pleasantly surprised by the wind turbines, it's very cool. And I wonder if you, you know, looking at sort of, you know, they can clearly be scaled up or down and there's some on your prototype here. Um, do you have any thoughts about how much power we could get from that? Could we combine that with what we currently have is passive solar and wood heating, uh, or other solutions about lighting? Uh, could the wind power take up the rest of that, do you think? I'm going to freeze. I'm going to freeze that because mm -hmm. we, we've got half an hour, and we have okay. to give you feedback within that half hour. Cool. So in the subsequent half hour, you you can t you can take up that that que that that question. Awesome. But you got you from now. You're going to get more marks from that, from taking the feedback from people. So, so um, yeah. we'd like to yeah. yeah. You start. You start. Okay. Yeah. So feedback on the presentation. Um, I thought your user perspective focus really shone through. I thought very clever use of the video to take us into the user perspective and you, um, your comment around the students have just come from the long drop toilet, so their perspective on a modern combusting toilet was a bit, uh, possibly a bit off, so I thought you really did well there. Um, the, I had a couple of more questions like cost effectiveness, you know, one of the issues is feasibility, and I don't think it's cost effective to raise the buildings we saw in the video. And you said raise those buildings, I think you'd probably replace them with something. Um, it was that. The other thing was, um, maybe going forward, I don't know. In, in your presentation, I saw the three wishes, but then by the end of the presentation, when we were into the detail, I'd forgotten the three wishes. And um, it wasn't until um, you spoke at the end and, and reinforced back to that, and I thought you could have tied your measures back to the wish just to say, this is, this is where it's creating gain or whatever. So there was that. Um, and the other thing was, why not tie, as you go forward, tie your activities more, your solutions, to the course offerings? Um, but overall, I thought it was very, very good. Yeah, um, yeah I, I really enjoyed the way that you split this up and that you came at it with you know, the, the way that we could look at the, the big Nile one, which is our septic system, and um, those solutions that you offered for that and kept in mind how some of this we could tie into our students in the programs and, and their their input and participation in some of the solutions as well. Because you know, you know we already have them be part of our gardening and, and 
their kind of living on the site. So I think that's really feasible. Um, I like the clarity that you had about you know, the, the big pit you made it very digestible for people who've never been to our place, I think, to see what, what goes on. Really appreciate that. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd love us to work together for six more months, could we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're available for hire. It's, a, it's a, an industry based project which, uh, which they can work on. Yeah. 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 yeah, no, um, I want to reiterate that. Thank you so much. I did I did really enjoy that student perspective as well. I thought that that was a very good way of going about it. And I really enjoyed that you like thought of the little things like providing really sort of easy solutions such as providing more shade, um, which, yeah, that does enhance the student's experience just having, having a place to um, hang out. And also like the use of making things multi-use, like where the hammocks are providing more shade there. Um, that's, yeah, that, that are all really great solutions. And then you also presented, like in an ideal world, what we could hope to achieve eventually um, with some really um, great solutions, including the wind turbines and the biogas. I was really interested in that and how much organic waste you need to, to have enough biogas to help run um, EcoQuest and um, and how that works throughout the year when, when our numbers do fluctuate. Um, I thought that that, yeah, it was a really great range of things um, that we can strive for, but then also stuff we can do right now, which was really cool to think about. Thank you. Great. I thought it was a, a, a very thoughtful presentation, and quite often students will put a, a, a whole lot of effort into developing the report and then the presentation is kind of a secondary, oh yeah, we need to get this done. Uh, but you guys clearly had, had, had put a lot of time into the presentation and you practiced and it, and it really showed. So I think across the board there wasn't uh, there wasn't a weak link in the presentation. So just from, from that point of view, it was, it was, it was really good. And I, and I also liked, um, I liked the thought behind it, you know, and, and the way that you presented and, and, and had um, the different wishes and then, and then and then addressed each one of those. I thought that was that was really good. Um, one of the things that I was just curious about is, you know, why wasn't there a constraint at the very beginning to say, yeah, you've got to do all of this, but it's got to be under this budget. Uh, and 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 if there, what, why why was that never raised? Because a whole lot of these things that you that you suggested, you just go, hmm, is that gonna, is that economically feasible to do or not? Um, or, or was there no constraint at all? Um, in which case, you guys did great. <laughs> yeah. I know there's an answer. I know there is an answer for that. That's yeah, something that we're going to put in the report. Right. Okay. Um, have you got some feedback? What would be areas for improvement that you would make to their presentation? You've got one? Yeah, Kevin. Yeah. Welcome, Kate. On Thomas' name. <laughs> <laughs> really good presentation. I really enjoyed it. Um, some insightful thinking. One thing I thought that could have helped is I know there's a few communities out there who are already doing things like wind power um, and with big battery systems and linked into a solar panel and heating through earth and things like that. Maybe that would have been good to bring that into your presentation, some like, feasibility um, around what other communities are doing. And I agree with Patrick. And also um, any council regulations that would have been impacted upon your decisions. But I think it's a fabulous job, great visuals, great story. Well done. Uh, you, you expect me to be a, be a bad dragon. So uh, I reiterate all the positive things, and I've written all those down as well. Um, fantastically rehearsed, fantastic first impression, the, the dress, the slides, so forth. A uh, couple of diagrams, just a bit too small to read. I'm going to get rid of the print and just have the graphic a bit bigger. Um, and time management, time management, time management. Okay. So uh, make sure that you've got an escape plan. If, as you see time is running out, that you can skip through when you get a warning uh, that you need to wrap up that you can skip through to the, the punchline, uh, conclusion slides, and, and so forth. And that applies to everybody else as, as well. I just know we've got uh, 
three students here, English is their alternative uh, language. And uh, wow, absolutely flawless uh, presentation. I appreciate that a couple of you, including the English as a first language student, were a bit anxious. Situation normal. You will always be struck by, by nerves when you absolutely don't experience, expect it. As an as a amateur singer, I get that. Stop, look, listen, take three breaths. No more, no less. Three deep breaths. And Mrs. Johnson told me that when I was a small kid at school. That's what you do. That will calm you down. Right. Um, that's, that's done um, for that team. Thanks very much to clients, EcoQuest, for, for uh, sponsoring this project. And thanks very much to the team. Thanks very much to the audience. Thank you, guys. Thank you.